everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. I'm excited today to be doing a solo playthrough for Destinies from Lucky Duck Games. Now, if you haven't checked out my unboxing on the channel, which happened recently, I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner. You can check that out first if you'd like, and then come back here and we'll dive into the setup as well as a solo play. Now, in terms of what we're gonna do around the solo play, this is an app driven board game. Inside of the app, you have two choices as a solo player. You can choose the challenge Challenger mode, which will put you on the clock with a limited number of rounds in order to be successful, or you also have the Explorer mode, which will open things up and allow you to really explore and enjoy the actual narrative of the game without that time crunch being a part of things. So it really caters to many different types of solo gamers. It's worth noting that inside of this video, as we go through the playthrough, there's going to be spoilers because this is a narrative adventure. However, I'm going to be just playing in this video the very first introductory scenario, which is not connected to the major campaign that's inside the core box, which stretches across four other scenario. So this is a standalone scenario you're going to see here that's not going to spoil anything going into that campaign and hopefully this will be a great learning experience to help you understand how the game operates and or help you decide if Destinies is a fit for you. So how will we turn our attention to the app and we'll go through each step as we move through the setup and then right into the playthrough. So when you first open up the app, this is the home screen you're going to see. We're gonna go ahead and choose Destinies, which is the core box. You've got the Sea of Sand expansion, which you'd need the expansion, of course, in order to enjoy that content. And you can see a list here of five different scenarios. As I mentioned earlier on, the bottom four are part of an intertwined campaign, but the top one is standalone. That's the one I'm focusing on here. So Nature of the Beast. It says, take part in the stories of the fated few chosen to shape the events leading to the final judgment embrace your destiny and maybe find salvation when we click on nature of the beast it states in the dead of winter a monster preys on the town among whispers of curses and dark magic there are a few who will not cower and hide but go into the night to face the beast what fate awaits them Next, the app is going to ask you whether you're playing normal with two to three players, Challenger, which is a solo mode, Explorer, which is a solo mode, or Bound by Fate, which is another expansion for two versus two play. In this case, I'm gonna be focusing on the Challenger mode, which is the one that's more timed, and here we go. It was a dark night in the dead of winter when the terrible howl resounded for the first time. No strangers to wolves, the men quickly assembled a hunting party. The few who returned, bloodied and terrified, spoke of a monster, a werewolf, hungry for human flesh. The townsfolk turned to the mayor, once a famed warrior, but they found his house dark and abandoned. Did he abandon his kin to the mercy of the monster? Or had some other darker fate befallen him? As the beast prowled the woods, many wondered, what does it want? Where did it come from? And most of all, how to put an end to this nightmare? But there were a few who knew their fates were, for various reasons, tied to the monster. And so, the threads of destiny became interwoven for the first time. Next, we have to choose our character. We have a noble, a witch, and a huntsman. For me, I'm going to choose the huntsman. We'll click on that and select OK. It now is going to tell us how we're going to set up this particular character. Not only does it show the miniature and it does allow you to actually spin it around so you can ensure you know what it looks like before jumping to the box to find it. You've also right down the middle, it states standard setup. We're gonna take one gold and exhaust all of our effort dice to start. Character bonus is to take bow, which is card number four as your starting item. And then for intelligence, dexterity, and power, which are on our character board or dashboard, we're going to use wooden circles, trackers, in order to place them at each of the numbers mentioned in the app. 
Just before we go ahead and set up the Huntsman, I want to talk about these trays. First off, you have coins in the top right hand corner. These ones are the metal coins from the Kickstarter. Cardboard ones will be inside of the base box. You've got point of interest tokens or POI tokens here. Next, you have experience tokens and these right here are pairs of trade tokens. The next thing you're going to want to have is your item cards and you can sort them by the top one, number one, all the way down to the highest number. I find that's the best. Same with the tile deck here as well. Make sure that the unexplored side, which is the grayscale side of the artwork is showing on the top. You'll need one player dashboard. You'll also need to find the card that relates to the character you've chosen. In my case, it's the Huntsman. And it's important to note that there is destiny information as well as story or narrative information on the back of this card that is big time spoiler potential. But really what's happening here is these two pieces of information behind this card are going to allow you two avenues to getting to the end or completing your destiny. And you get to choose which way you go, whether you follow the gold route on the right or the purple route on the left and if you flip it over you'll see you've got two different options as well as a narrative there so we're for now going to place this right here we'll take a closer look at what's on the back in a little bit Next, give your character two main dice and place them in this oval area right here, which means they're available. These main dice are always available for you to roll on your turn when performing actions within the game. Next, you're gonna find effort dice. You'll take three of them, and as it noted inside the app, all of them should be exhausted. So in other words, don't put them in the available area here, just place them outside. Next, as the app instructs, I'm gonna go ahead and take one coin and just place it next to my character board. I got card number four from the item deck right here, and it ends up being a bow for my character, which is considered a ranged weapon. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this in one of my five available slots along the bottom. I'll just put it in the middle for now. The next step is a really important one to make sure you get right. As it states inside the app, your intelligence, dexterity, and power will have wooden markers that are gonna be placed in certain numerical values on each of the tracks. The blue row is the intelligence row, the green row is dexterity, and the final one, power, is in red. Just like that, all of the wooden trackers are in the proper spaces depicted in the app. The last thing you will need is the miniature that represents the character you've chosen. So in this case, it is the Huntsman. And again, if you want to be sure you've got the right miniature as they're quite small, just take a look at the app and you can compare visually to ensure you've got the right one as the next step is going to be building out the land to begin the scenario. Now let's head back to the app to determine which map tiles need to be placed to begin this scenario. The app now mentions that it's our turn for the Huntsman. Day number one, we're allowed to refresh an effort die, which I will do momentarily. And you'll notice that it states days remaining eight. This is where the challenger mode places a restriction on how much time you have in order to complete the scenario. So beginning day number one, we're gonna refresh one of our effort dice and that's gonna go into our pool here. Let's talk quickly about the bow as well as the back of the Huntsman card. You serve your mistress well, and you have done so since long before she married that cruel man. When she decided to get rid of him, you gladly assisted. But the curse meant to turn him into a wolf succeeded only partially. Now in his half-bestial form, he surely comes for revenge. You must finish what she started before his nature is discovered. And you can see down below here, we've got two different destiny passes. There's an or in between them. One is to finish the spell. It states, find and bring two ritual items to the crossroads so first off we need to find two ritual items those are keywords on the card just similar to how when we got our bow at the beginning of the game there was a keyword for ranged weapon so we're looking for a keyword ritual that's a good thing we get two of those we head to the crossroads once we know where that is and we can try to finish the spell or we can kill the monster find and bring two silver items to the blacksmith so he can make you a weapon to kill the werewolf on the bottom here it states when you are ready go to the dark woods in the south to fulfill your destiny so we know it's south but we just don't know exactly how this whole thing's going to pan out yet as we have some things we need to accomplish first 
Let's quickly talk about the item that I got to be in the scenario as well as the dice rolling in the game and how that interacts with these tracks because you're going to need to understand that to understand what this bow can do for you. So basically this bow here has a couple uses. First off, I could go ahead and discard the bow and it states in a dexterity test, which is tracked along this green row right here. You can also use all of your markers in the power row as well. Now, why does that matter? So normally when you're doing a test, you're only carrying what the row you're doing a test in. So if it was dexterity, I'd be just looking at the markers and their current position based on the numerical values. When you do a test, very quickly, you're going to have these two main dice. You will roll them always, but you can go ahead and exert yourself with effort dice if you have them available in this pool area here. Add them in by rolling them together and whatever your total ends up being, let's say hypothetically it was five, you'll look at the dexterity track, slot yourself in at five and go, what is sitting there for markers in that current position as well as less than that? How many wooden markers are there? So in this case, from the five slot, there's only one marker in there. And yes, if there was an actual marker in the five slot that would count as success as well so you count up your successes one two nothing else and just like that you know exactly how many successes you have that you will then input into the app so your brain is likely clicking already in terms of this being pretty powerful as it allows you to also use all of your markers that are inside the power row as well. So if I happen to have a five, that would actually allow me to use this marker as well on top of whatever I get from my dexterity row. So it can really start mounting up. And yes, you are gonna be able to manipulate these markers, whether it's making them easier to achieve by moving them to the left in terms of getting successes, or the game may push them to the right on you and then they end up becoming tougher to actually achieve in the long run. So choosing when to use an item for its ability, like discarding it for that great ability, and when to use effort dice in your roll is going to be very crucial. So discarding is one way to use the item. The other way to use it is for its QR code. You can choose to scan this. Again, the app will let you know when you're able to scan something and for what reason you're scanning it. Could be an interaction with an NPC within the world. Maybe it's asking you, do you have any weapons on you? You might want to be honest and scan and say, yeah, I've got a bow on me, right? Or it might say something like, please give me all your weapons. And then you may go ahead and choose to scan the bow. If you do, do it with an interaction like that, you may not get the bow back. So just be wary of your choices and when you choose to scan. Now, right out of the gates, out of the two options, I'm slightly leaning towards finishing the spell. I think the idea of potentially finding ritual items could be quite cool, and if we could find the crossroads, that would be nice as well. But if we end up running into the blacksmith, that could also be an option. Um, it's kind of tough to say which way we're going until we maybe get one of the pieces to one of the two different destiny paths, whether it be a ritual item or a silver item. That's really going to probably push us one way or the other. And then on top of that, I've also placed the Huntsman miniature inside the city. So we are starting our very first day. Now, when you begin your turn, there's a handful of things you can do in order to go through the flow of the game. Let's cover that right now. At the start of every turn, you always refresh one effort die as depicted in the app. And you saw that when the first day began. So I already went ahead and did that. So we jumped past that step. Now we're moving to the move step. And this is where we're allowed to move up to two spaces away orthogonally only. We cannot move diagonally. Now, if we move into an unexplored tile, we must immediately stop our movement, resolve and explore the tile we're on. And then when that tile reveals itself, we can choose to go to a point of interest on it. And that point of interest interaction is the third and final thing you do on your turn. Now, you don't have to move on your turn. I could choose to stay exactly where I am and just interact with a point of interest that's currently on the board. And as of right now, the church, which is represented by this miniature right here, is the only thing I can actually interact with currently unless I decide to move out of this area and head somewhere else trying to find something. But I am quite curious curious as to what's going on in the church. So let's go ahead and stay put and we're not going to do any movement and we're going to jump right to the interaction with the app. So let's head to the app and see what happens. So let's go ahead and interact with the church here. I'm going to click on the miniature itself. It asks me and confirms, do I want to visit the church as my POI or point of interest action? Yes, I do. So let's go ahead and hit yes. The church gathers the faithful every day since the beast attacked. Some see the beast as a divine punishment. Most believe it can't step onto sacred ground. With so many eager to repent for their sins, the offering box is always full. 
The priest approaches you as you enter. He seems distracted. Now you can see there's a number of different things that we can do here along with a number of different symbols on the screen. Some of them quite obvious. If you see an icon that matches one of the different rows on your player board, whether it's intelligence, blue, green dexterity, or red power test, you know that that is going to pull from that particular test and you can hope or at least plan to be good at that thing prior to doing it. Or at least you know what the odds are roughly in your head in terms of what you can roll on your dice versus where your markers are. If you happen to interact with one of the ones like Prey, for instance, it's basically something that does not require any kind of rolling or test. So you'll just pray and see what happens, essentially. There might even be another selection to be made after that selection, but you won't know until you do it. You've also got down there another one that states ask what troubles him. So this is more of a conversational thing that could lead to something. And then at the very bottom, you'll see what looks to be the QR icon as well as a D there for destiny in the bottom right. This allows you to choose, if you'd like, to scan your destiny card that's on your player board. And you have to choose whether you're scanning it for the left side or the right side, purple or gold, depending on which destiny you're asking about or which one you're trying to get information for, and you'll scan it and see whether or not any useful information comes of it. Just know that when you do this, it can only happen once on that interaction and then it disappears. So just be aware, you won't be able to scan both of the QR codes for either your purple or yellow destiny with the same scan in the same point of interest. Once you scan it on one of them, that option is going to disappear. So choose wisely. Now, the next thing I want to mention is the fact that when you enter into a point of interest like we have here with the church, you might think you can only do one thing. That's actually incorrect. You can do as much as you want in this particular point of interest. So you can choose to do everything if everything appeals to you, or you could pick and choose based on how you're feeling or the vibe you're getting from that location or thing. Maybe certain things you're good at, maybe certain things you're bad at, and you're kind of going about it in that sense. It will change every time you interact with one of these POI locations. So that's a really cool element of the game that once you jump into an area like this church here, I could choose to pray. I may look at stealing at money and go, eh, I don't really need to steal money right now. I probably don't really want them to be mad at me right into the gate. So maybe I'll wait on that. I do kind of want to ask what troubles him. And in terms of scanning my destiny, I kind of want to do that too. So maybe I'll do three out of the four things. So let's go ahead right now. Maybe we'll do the pray first, then we'll work our way down. But you can choose in any order you want. So choosing to pray, it states your convictions and your conscience are clear. The prayer fills you with new determination. Refresh all of your effort dice. That's a huge plus. So I'm going to take the two effort dice that are exhausted. They're going to get placed in the oval of available or the pool of available dice I have now during checks, which is great. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And we've got, you can see, selections are going to dynamically change. And the other thing that's worth mentioning when interacting with a POI location is just the cool factor of when you do something, it may have ripple effects on the other choices that are there, or it might even introduce a new selection that wasn't there previously. So the order in which you do these things shouldn't always be top to bottom. You might want to do them in a particular order, whether it's for your own advantage or for the advantage towards whatever it is driving you to fulfilling your destiny. So let's go to asking what troubles him next and see what we got. Friend, I have a dilemma, he confesses. I intended to visit the camp to spread the word of Christ among them. Now my trouble is twofold. First, I won't attempt it without permission from their fortune teller, otherwise it would be pointless to even try. And second, well, now amid these hellish events, I'm not sure whether I'm prepared to spread the good news anymore. So let's hit OK. So it looks like a new option has popped up. As I mentioned, it would happen or could happen. And in this case, it says encourage him. So if we want to, and we feel that our intelligence, that skill check is not that bad, or we've got a good shot at pulling this off, we could try to encourage him, which may not be a bad idea. But first, before we do this, let's go ahead and ask the priest about our destiny. 
So I'm going to click on Ask the Priest about your destiny and it now is going to go ahead and allow me to scan the QR code. I just want to make sure that I do it for the right destiny I'm going after to start the game. For me, I'm going to do finish the spell. So that's the yellow side of the card, which is on the right side. So let's go ahead we're going to tap the screen here to scan it. It says, I don't know of such matters, but the old Pathfinder might. All right, so it appears like we have a lead now. The old Pathfinder, someone we need to track down. Let's continue on here. So the next two options that we still have available here, uh, steal the money from the offering box. Very tempting to be honest, because we do have gold in the game. So we know if we steal money, it's gonna give us likely actual gold, which again, we can use later on. But do I need it right now? Or do I want to stir the pot? Ugh, that's the tough moral question here. So for now, I think I'm going to avoid this, but know that I could potentially come back here uh, in another interaction and do this if this interaction or this option is still here. So for now, I'm actually want to kind of encourage him. I think I want to encourage him on his endeavor and see where that lands him. So let's go ahead. We're going to focus on doing an intelligence test now. So I'm gonna click on encourage him and it immediately will let us know that we need to enter a number of successes based on our check. So now we go to our dice pool and determine what our role is and how many successes we get. All right, so looking at our intelligence test here, we've got five, seven, and 11. So not too, too bad, but you'll notice inside of the intelligence row, I've only got three markers versus every other row has four. So my chances of hitting successes are a little less. There is one way to kind of offset that and help yourself out. And that is by using effort dice, not only for the chance that you could boost the total of your role overall which could push you up and get you more successes but also from the fact there is a special side of the die that gives you a guaranteed success if you land it one in six chance that's just one extra success on top of the pile which is pretty awesome and as of right now i have all of these dice available i could roll all of them but remember only one of them is guaranteed to come back at the beginning of my next turn so you have to use these effort dice wisely remember these two will always stick around but these ones are the ones you're managing constantly and if you get too greedy you might use too much effort early and then not be able to pull off the great thing you want to do later on or you might uh, skip on using it early and not even have an option to use them later on and regret that you didn't use them previously so let's go ahead on this one this is kind of a tough call if I'm looking at these two dice, just to give an idea as to what their best rolls are, four is the highest, there's a one in six chance, more the average sits in the two to three range. And there's actually a breakdown chart inside of the rule book as well in terms of the averages. Um, but basically best roll I could get off these two dice would be an eight, which obviously would give me two successes, but the chance of that happening, fairly slim. So what I'm probably gonna do is put at least one of these in here. And I think that might be all I'm gonna do and just hope that this works out for me and I get at least two successes off of it. I am tempted to go, I am tempted to put one more in, but I think I'm gonna hold off, I'm gonna hold off. Let's just do three. And obviously my bow is not gonna help me in this situation whatsoever. Hey, that's pretty, wow, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess slim, uh, slim chances happen on camera. Okay, uh, so we got eight, 10, that's holy. We almost got all of the successes. So it would sit right here, which means anything that's here or below counts as a success, so one, two. So we are inputting two successes into the app. So let's go ahead and do it. For now, we'll put this in the exhausted area, drop these back in the available pool. Two successes, not going to complain, especially with that rule. Do you really think so? The priest is still torn, but your arguments seem to work. So be it then. As soon as the fortune teller agrees to see me, I'll go pay her a visit. Okay, so we know it's a she and we know we need to find this, well, we need to find a fortune teller now. So we know we also have to try and find a pathfinder as well based on the destiny that we're moving towards. So these are the kind of things you wanna keep in your mind as you're moving along so you can keep the story straight and ensure that you're working towards what you're trying to accomplish in your given destiny. But remember, again, you can always pivot. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And the last thing left is to steal money. I don't want to do that. 
So I'm gonna go down to the bottom right and hit end turn. It asks me just to confirm that I wanna end my turn. Yes, I do. And just like that, the first day is over and we move into the second day. So it does stay right there to refresh an effort die. So I'll bring the one die that I use back. So we still have all the dice available. We only have seven days remaining to figure out what the heck's going on and get our destiny sorted out. Let's hit okay and see what happens next. Now, the other thing that can happen inside the app is as soon as you hit okay, sometimes there's going to be in-game events or things that are gonna trigger at the beginning of a turn and that will spell itself out in the app so you don't have to worry about it. The app will tell you when to change things based on the story that's ever progressing. In this case, it just jumps right to day two. Nothing on the app is telling you to change anything. So you move right into your turn. So I start off with refreshing a die as I already did. Now I have to choose if I wanna move and at this point, I definitely do. So looking at the board currently where my character is sitting and I have all these different directions I could potentially go in not knowing where I should be going here is part of the fun. I'm going to go to the east. So I'm actually going to have my character move a space and remember when things are explored in other words let's say hypothetically this was flipped upwards so there was actual color there and this one was also flipped upwards and let's say I started my turn on this tile way over here. When you're doing your movement, you can move up to two spaces so long as the tiles you're moving across are explored tiles with their full color. If they are unexplored, well, the second you try to move any further than one and you land on something that's unexplored like I just did, you have to stop your movement and you go to the app, click that tile in the app and let it know that you want to actually explore it. So let's head to the app and do that right now. All right, so let's click on that tile and it'll state the eastern part of town where the smith and the inn can be found. So it is giving you a little bit of heads up information so you can kind of look to see what's in a certain area. As soon as you state you're going to say yes to your explorer, then you're heading in that direction. So you know the Smith and the Inn's over there, uh, and that's okay for what I wanna do, mainly because we know the Smith should be the blacksmith. I don't think it would be any other Smith. Uh, so that would actually be leaning a little, us a little bit more towards killing the monster in our destiny, seeing as we get two silver items and bring them to the blacksmith. So that's actually not a bad spot, let's do it. So let's hit yes, to explore 23, it tells us to flip it over. It says this part of town houses the inn and the craftsmen's dwellings. Usually it's teeming with life, but now the street is empty. We'll go ahead and flip this as well on the game board. Moving on through the app, it then will tell you to start placing other tiles around. And you can see we got a 52, I believe that said a 42 and 54. So once we placed all three of those, then it's gonna start dropping points of interest. So you can see the inn it talked about now has an actual location we can interact with. The Smith miniature is being placed. And if we hit okay again, the mayor's house is here too. And now we can go ahead, being that we're on that tile uh, where the app's depicting, we can choose to interact with the Smith, the inn or the mayor's house. So here is the current layout of the land in terms of which point of interest I'm actually interested in checking out. This is a really tough call. Currently, the mayor's house sounds like the most interesting one to check out. So I'm gonna go ahead with that. Let's head back to the app and interact with it. All right, let's visit the mayor's house and see what's there. The house is eerily quiet. Snow drifts cover the path and it's clear no one has been here for a few days at the very least. Both the mayor and his wife disappeared just as the beast showed up. What happened to them? Hmm. Well, we've got two options here. One, it states that we can try to open the door. Now it's showing two different ways we can go about this. This means basically it's going to likely give us a choice between whether we want to use a power test to get through the door, which if we think our power is at a place we like it, or we want to just burn a lot of effort to try to get through this door, we might be able to pull this off, or we could choose an item that we have to try to get into the door itself or we could say, you know what, skip the door, let's just keep looking around outside and see if we find anything interesting. And I'm kind of leaning towards that, to be honest. The, my intelligence uh, isn't so, well, it's equal. It's equal in terms of the lower levels. Both are in the five and seven positions. But let's do that. Let's look around outside and see. So we're gonna have to do a test now. So let's head to our dice, see how much effort we wanna boost this thing up by.
All right, so we know we're doing a intelligence test here, and I do want to make sure that I pull this off. So we're definitely doing these two dice. We always get them when we roll for a test. But how many of these do I want to use this time is the question. I do kind of want to... Uh, we did pretty good with the one roll last time, but we got really lucky by getting two fours. I highly doubt that's going to happen again, but I also don't want to burn all of my effort dice this early in the turn in case something exciting happens. So let's go ahead and just do this for now, and we'll see how this pans out. All right, so things changed drastically there from last time. Uh, wow, that did not work out well. So <laughs> great example of things going sideways. So first off, two is going to get us no successes on our track whatsoever. But what saved us is we at least got one. So hopefully if we had have gotten zero on this, maybe something really terrible would have happened. Who knows? But we're going to head back to the app with just the one we got and see what happens. Punching in a single success will confirm you find no other way in. There's only darkness behind the dirty windows. Nothing of interest draws your attention. We do gain an experience, but you can see here it's actually telling us, and this is kind of a sad thing, likely because of how badly we did this test, we're actually going to lose some intelligence. So it's stating that one of our markers on the intelligence row needs to move one position to the right. Well, that's quite unfortunate, and I can tell you right now, I don't really want to push 5 to 6 or 6 to 8, so I might just push 11 up to 12 and just leave it there and be done with it. So that'll resolve that, but we do get an experience point, which is actually a good thing, and I'll talk to you about when we can use that, which is pretty much any time on our turn when we're not doing a test. But as of right now, our turn is wrapping up, but we can use it at the beginning of the next turn, no problem. Now, as you can see inside the app, we have the choice to open the door. Of course, we'll be using brute force to get through it if we want to do it. And I'm actually going to hold off on this. I'm so tempted to try this because I do still have two effort dice, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to try on your own. Um, it is so tempting, but I feel like if I burn all my effort dice, it might come back to burn me later on. So for now, I'm going to hold on to what I got to make sure my next turn, I've got all my effort dice available, even though there could be something good in there. Uh, being that those two individuals and my destiny kind of lets us know that these individuals are likely nowhere to be seen anywhere so i don't expect to find anybody inside the house I'd be very shocked if there was somebody in there but who knows who knows so let's go ahead and end our turn here and we're gonna hit yes and we now move into day number three we get to refresh a die so the one die that i lost when i rolled it comes back into my pool so i've got everything available and we'll hit okay and see what the app states Drawn by rumors of the monster, the bishop himself arrives in town. He takes up residence in the church and it's said that he offers a reward to anyone who slays the wolves threatening the faithful. He believes them to be in league with the beast. We'll hit OK. The priest has been traveling east toward the crossroads, burdened by some troubling dilemma. All right, so it looks like we're replacing the miniature that represented the church from before with a bishop. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hit OK. And we can begin at day number three. Starting day number three and my turn, remember I got this XP token here and you can spend this anytime on your turn. Has a great benefit of being able to move any one marker two spaces or you can choose to break that up and have one marker move one and another marker move another. The only thing you can't do is move a marker on top of another marker. That's just not gonna work. Uh, but beyond that, it's very helpful to make these three different skills easier to get successes with. Now, the strategy around maybe using your XP token is sure, I can go ahead right now and just pick maybe the skill that I'm weakest in in order to move things. You can also, also try and get these ones at the back closer to the front so that you have a better chance of maybe getting beyond just two successes. Um, instead of having to bank on these to get the third success early in the game, you try to get these a little bit further down the track and maybe get four every so often. Um, that's one thing you can definitely focus on. The other strategy might be the timing of when you cash that XP token in in terms of the app. So say for instance, you're moving into a point of interest, you can see the list of all the things you can do there and you realize that maybe one of them heavily, uh, something you're interested in doing relies on this bottom power row here and you go, hmm, maybe this is the time to go ahead and spend that XP token before committing to that particular action and then you can go ahead and do it. So long as you're not in the middle of the test, you're allowed to spend this. 
Now in day three here, my head's spinning a little bit because I've got lots of things going on in terms of what I should be focusing on. And of course, the more you explore, the more options pop up and the more doubt creeps into your mind as to what you should be doing. But I do know based on what I interacted with earlier on at the church, scanning my destiny card and the individual there stated that I should go and find the old pathfinder. That is definitely going to help lead me down the path of my destiny for finishing the spell, right? So that's that. The opposite side is to continue trying to find silver items items to try and take down the monster and we know that's connected to the blacksmith who is currently sitting in the same tile I'm in right now. So I could on my turn right now decide not to move at all and just interact with the blacksmith, see if I get lucky and maybe the blacksmith knows where some of these pieces can be found in order to go get them and bring them back to him or that may end up wasting a turn, just interacting with him because I don't have what I need to give him at this moment to create the weapon. So I might just get a bunch of information that doesn't really help me. That's the hard thing to know right now. The other options I have is with the finish the spell destiny path, I know that I need the two ritual items and I need to go to the crossroads. So when I think of crossroads, I think of signposts. And when I think of signposts, I look over here and notice there's a signpost there and there's a signpost over here. So now I've got two more options that I could potentially move to, making this decision even more tough. But I think I'm going to be adventurous. I think I'm going to go ahead and head north. And we'll see what we find up there. The only reason I'm heading there rather than the other one is because the signpost over here just appears a little bit more interesting. Like maybe there is more going on there. I don't know. This is going to be very interesting. I'm grasping at straws here. <laughs> All right, so inside the app, let's head over here and click on the tile that I want to explore, which is 54. We're going to say yes. And it says a patchwork of frozen mud, snow, and dried grass, a bleak sight. Well, that doesn't sound good. I think I chose the wrong area here. So we're gonna hit okay. There is a farmhouse, okay? So there's at least something I can interact with here. Hopefully give me something. Uh, what's happening here? A strange man seems to be plowing the field in the middle of winter. Yeah, that is super odd. Oh, that's really weird. Um, oh, great. Now I'm gonna choose between what seemed to be the obvious choice with a farmhouse with a lunatic. All right, it's just too strange seeing somebody plowing in the middle of nowhere, and I'm sure this is probably a diversion within the game, maybe, I don't know. But let's go find out why this individual seems to think plowing in the winter is a good idea. So we'll click on this POI here, and yes, let's visit the strange plowman. He pushes his plow, yet no oxen pull it. Rats sit on his shoulders and skitter through his clothes. What is this strange scene? The plowman greets you with a smile and a wink. You are not like the others, he notes. The others are unaware of fate. What? Okay, so first off here, uh, the very top one is gonna allow me to do a skill check, and this is an intelligence test. It says, take a closer look, something is wrong, or listen to his ramblings. Well, listening to his ramblings sounds like the Oh, this is such a tough call. Let's go with, let's listen to his ramblings. He speaks of strange events of rats, plagues, and wars. It's unnerving, but you don't understand much. He notices your interests and reaches for a tattered bag on his belt. This is gonna be interesting. He, then he laughs again and shows you. By God, what is this thing? A cruel amalgamation of flesh stitched together, oozing corruption. He notices your look and waves the terrible thing at you. This? I noticed it at the stones when I came here. It was too delightful to leave there. Do you want it? Planning any rituals? Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, I am, thank you very much. Oh, curious things you seek, last the plowman. In return, I will only require a card that holds your fate. What could he mean? A card like the ones the fortune teller. Oh no, so I need to get a card in order to get this from him. Okay, all right, okay. I can do this, so I don't have the card right now, but I could certainly make that happen. All right, so let's do the take a closer look, something is wrong option now, but this is getting very interesting because I now I know for sure where a ritual item is, 100%. I just need to, uh, you know, close off that other story uh, loop there. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. And this is gonna be a test, so we're gonna need to determine how many dice we need to roll. 
Now I am inside of a test, which means I can't use his XP token. Don't worry, I wasn't planning on actually using it for this top row at all. I actually want to use it for the other ones because there's more trackers in those. So that's the reason why I didn't spend it during this turn, but I will probably be spending it in the future before a test. First off, grabbing two dice here, and I think I'm going to commit two to this one just to see. Well, I, first off, I know he's got a ritual item. He's not going to give it to me from this interaction, I highly doubt. But you know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea to just kind of add some extra effort dice in there just in case. Maybe this is like a interesting way to get it in some other fashion. We'll see. Let's go ahead and roll and see how this pans out. All right, so we got one success, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is on the blue. So that one's right here. So that's going to be two successes plus the one. That's three. That's actually a really good roll. So let's head back to the app and drop it in. All right, so three successes going in. This is the highest amount I've gotten so far. What sort of madman plows the fields in winter? What sort of strange riddles leave his mouth? Where do the rats come from? The details of the wrongness of the scene come to you gradually. The smell of sulfur, the fact that neither the plow nor the plowman himself seem to leave any tracks in the snow. As the dreadful realization dawns upon you, the plowman gives you a mischievous smile and winks. What the heck? Okay. Okay, interesting. So it says, give him a card or it's a dark spirit, banish it. Okay, well at this point in time, I don't have either thing that I could use to interact with this. So I'm gonna end my turn here, but now I do know that I can go one of two ways with this. We'll confirm that ending of turn. And it states we're gonna go ahead and refresh one of our effort die or now we've got a total of two inside of our available area, which is good. We got five days remaining. We're on day four. Let's hit OK and see what happens. The missing mayor is the main topic of town gossip. Some blame his disappearance on his wife, who is wi widely distrusted. Distrusted. She's a strange woman who is rumored to dabble in the arcane arts. The sorceress, some called her behind her back. When he disappeared, so did she. Hmm, yes. Okay, and we're jumping right here into day number four. All right, this strange story gets weirder by the second. I think what I'm gonna do is head to the other signpost that I saw to see if that happens to lead me in the direction I want to see. So that's gonna actually be tube movement because remember, you can't move diagonally. So this works out pretty good. I'll move from where I am here. I have no reason to really go to the farmhouse, so I won't do that. So I'm just gonna move in here for one, which I'm allowed to do. And I'm always allowed to move two, and then I have to stop and explore tile. So it works out perfectly. We'll go ahead into the app and see what we find. Heading on to this far tile over here, we'll go ahead and explore it. And it states, the crossroads, there we go, where the hanging tree grows, an ominous place. This is good, this is very good. Okay, so we're gonna hit uh, okay here. And what comes next? We have 24 to the south of it. It says there's music in the distance. Oh, that's the camp. That's the, that's the group that the, um, that the individual from the church was mentioning. So that is definitely a place we want to go and likely should go. Um, yeah, that is that is definitely it. That's gotta be the spot. Um, and then we're gonna hit okay. So hanging tree, we gotta drop that point of interest. We have to drop the crossroads miniature. It says, uh, oh, this is just to interact with the crossroads itself, which is likely tied to my destiny because I think, yeah, it says find and bring two ritual items to the crossroads. So that's the individual I'll be interacting with. And that actually is the same miniature of the individual who was at the church earlier, who I encouraged to, uh, to get on his way, but he wouldn't enter into the, he wouldn't head towards the group. Uh, to spread the good news, uh, unless, of course, I went in, uh, based on my uh, note here that I put to the side, to talk to the fortune teller, to get, uh, you know, a, you know, get in the fortune teller's good graces, basically. So, yeah, this is, this is working out good. So far, things are starting to connect a little, so we'll hit OK. And that's it. So now we can begin our turn. We're going to go ahead and make sure the actual board state matches the app now. All right, so as we enter this new map tile and we head into the area where the crossroad is, I now know where my two major areas are in terms of my destinies. I know where the blacksmith is, and I now know where the crossroads are. So basically, I know the locations I need to go um, in order to, you know, do most of what I need to do, but I still need two ritual items 
for the crossroads or two silver items for the blacksmith. But at least I have those two locations first. Once I get either one of them, then I head south. But for right now, I do know that to the south of me, if there is music and they are mentioning the exact same group that the priest had, that who's pointing at me right now mentioned uh, earlier on in this uh, playthrough, I should probably be heading south. So I'm going to actually interact with the priest for my POI action here to determine if he knows anything else or if there's anything else I need to know. Uh, maybe he has a hint as to where I can find these ritual items. Who knows? All right, let's click on the crossroads itself. We'll say visit, yes. Some say the crossroads are places of arcane power where dark deals are made in times like these in the shadow of the hanging tree. You're inclined to agree. In the distance, you hear a sad howl. The beast? No, not even a wolf, something smaller. The priest stands by the crossroads distraught. He approaches you as you come. Hello, friend. Did you have a chance to talk to the fortune teller on my behalf yet? No, I didn't. This is what I love. This is this is awesome. I love these tie-ins where like you're moving around and if I had chosen to move in like a different direction, I wouldn't have found this connection. So it's really cool to see this stuff starting, the, the story starting to kind of intertwing, uh, intermingle with the choices I'm making uh, as I go through here. We have a bunch of options that I was actually not expecting. Um, Bury a ritual item in the crossroads. Okay, so that's one of the, that's the major thing I'm trying to do towards uh, my yellow destiny. The other option is to look at the sign. So that's not a bad idea, just to figure out what's going on in, in, in different directions. Find the howls. We know there's some small creature of some type, something. Uh, so we could do that. That might actually be the, the one skill test I do want to do. Um, and then in terms of using my XP token, remember that I, I'm probably not going to use it again because it's still using um, my uh, dex or my intelligence, which uh, as of right now, I've been doing pretty good with. So I'll probably hold on to the XP token for a little bit longer. And then I could also ask the priest about my destiny. That's actually not bad at all. Let's, let's actually do that first. I don't want to lose out on the opportunity to do that. So let's actually go right now. We'll do ask the priest about your destiny. So let's go ahead and make sure we do the right one. So the one that is yellow or gold. The fortune teller can surely tell you much about this. Well, I know where I'm going next. Okay, so we're gonna head okay to that. Great, so just confirmed it even more. Um, we're not gonna do the top one. Let's look at the sign and see what the sign states. Uh, north to the manor, okay. West, back to town, we know that. Someone tied a colorful shawl to the sign pointing south. Curious, okay. Gotcha, all right, so not too much information there beyond what we already knew. Uh, let's do the following of the howls. That sounds pretty cool. Now, I, again, not using an XP token here. We're just gonna jump right into the test. All right, going into this test here, how many dice do we want to use? I know for sure I wanna use at least one effort die with my main dice. The question is, do I want to use more? I don't even know what I'm running into here. This could be really bad, it could be really good, it could be something in between. Do I wanna burn all of my effort though on the first thing? <sighs> so tough. I do have a five and a seven, and I mean, the average rolls on these things, I have a pretty good shot to land, hopefully around a seven. So I think I'm gonna stick with what I got. I may regret this. <laughs> I may regret this a lot. Oh, let's hold off on using that effort die, the last one. Oh, we got a good roll, seven, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So we got the seven, that is two, and we'll put two. Now again, I, in terms of uh, you know how many successes you need for a particular check, uh, that's something you're gonna have to discover. I don't even know that myself. I don't even know what the average gauge is in terms of that. There is a breakdown table in the rule book that can help you with some of that stuff, but um, it's not specific to the check itself. I don't know how many successes I actually need in order to be you know the most successful. Uh, I believe I did read though, I think that six successes might be the highest you can get. Um, so if I'm getting a two, it's, it's below average, uh, but still decent, I, I hope. But again, not every check needs a ton of successes as each check may not be considered a difficult check in general. So let's go to the app, punch those two successes in and see what happens. So what did the howls reveal? Let's go ahead. Punch it in. On your guard, you go where you think the animal is. Soon you stumble upon a set of tracks, too small for a wolf, Fighting your way through the snow and bushes you follow, a warm welcome awaits you as a hunting dog, clearly lost, jumps toward you, overjoyed to see a human. It doesn't take much to convince it to follow you. 
Game Dog. That's awesome. We got ourselves a companion. 26 is the item I'll be grabbing from the deck. It seems really strange to call a dog an item, but in this case, it's an animal, as it states in the keyword right here. So it does have an always effect. This is worth talking about, because you remember I talked about discard. You can discard the bow to use it once for that ability. This is really cool because the dog is an always effect, which means as long as I have this in one of my five slots on my character board, in every one of these red skill tests, I get a plus one to my roll total every single time on on top of being able to go ahead and scan the QR code if I can use the dog in different creative ways throughout the gameplay. Now heading back to the app, I'm going to end my turn as I have nothing to actually uh, bury at this point in time. So we're gonna hit end of turn, confirm it, and it states, you fear you have but a few days until the beast attacks the one who brought this fate upon it, your mistress. You must finish it fast. Okay, well, that's stressful. Okay, so we do have the refreshing of our effort die. One back in the pool. We have four days remaining. We're moving into day number five. Let's see what happens. The beast attacks. The grounds around the noble manor to the northeast become a scene of slaughter. Men and animals alike lie dead. The manor's gates are shut. Well, that doesn't sound good. It sounds like I missed out on a party uh, and potentially the option to interact with a bunch of people and things that are no longer an option. Let's hit okay and see what happens. The town hall is hastily transformed into a field hospital. The victims are lucky. A doctor was passing through town. That seems really weird timing wise, but okay. Uh, it states the town hall is open, albeit in a different function. That's really weird. Why would, something about that seems odd. Uh, let's go ahead and hit okay. And it's going to place 34, the noble manor lies that way. Okay, so if we want to actually head up to the manor that was just the area where everything just went to, uh, to hell in a handbasket, that's where we want to go. Uh, let's hit OK, see what happens next, and we're right back. So we're ready to start day number five. Well, as tempting as it is to head north and find out what the heck happened at the manor, I'm actually going to head south because I'm going to continue pushing towards my destiny. So let's move south and hope that I'm heading in the right direction here. Heading back to the app, let's go ahead and interact with the tile I just landed on, which is 24. We're going to explore it. Flipping it over, it states the camp is here. It's warm and welcoming. Are they not afraid of the beast? We'll hit OK. It looks like we do have the ability to interact with the camp here with a miniature, which I'll be placing. And we have the king's wagon. Interesting. Ooh, that's... Always surrounded by celebration, it is, apparently. And there we go. And now we can choose which point of interest we want to interact with. Well, I can tell you right now, I know exactly which one that I want to interact with. So we are going to go ahead and interact with the camp itself. Because remember, I'm trying to talk to a fortune teller. I believe that miniature that's placed there is exactly the individual I need to speak with. So let's go back to the app, click on that, and see if we can get this person to allow the priest to come into this area. Let's go ahead and interact with the camp. We'll hit yes, set up the trade stack. All right, so this is really interesting. So it states right here, we're gonna find all of these different items and we're gonna set them up at this location and we can potentially purchase these things as well. I've gone ahead and set up the trade stack. You'll also see I've got a token representing the trade stack. You'll also find the other token that's exactly the same match and just place it where the app will tell you so that you remember if you visit that location in the future, you can then interact with this stack of cards. So as you can see, the other token has been placed on that tile, reminding me that these things are connected. Let's take a look at the camp. It says, acquired a part of the camp. The fortune teller's wagon is treated with reverence. By the entrance, a few older women are performing a ceremony of some sort, blowing smoke over a talisman you don't recognize. One gives you a toothless smile as you enter the wagon. I feel I can help you, says the fortune teller, but you must tell me what you need. She pauses, unlike the priest. He wants to talk to me, but doesn't know how to ask. The fool. Uh, we have a whole bunch of options here. So we have let the fortune teller div divine your fate for a 
coin, which I actually do have a coin from the very beginning of the game, so we could actually do this. We can speak in defense of the priest, which I plan to do from the very beginning to try to get the priest into this camp. Uh, so that's an option. Actually, I could probably just do that first because it's the first thing I've been trying to do. Uh, we can also look at the market uh, at this location. We can ask the fortune teller about our destiny, which is another great option I want to do. And we can also ask the fortune teller about an item. So there's a whole bunch of options here. Let's speak in defense of the priest first. And we're going to have to do a check in order to do this. And I kind of want to make sure that I actually succeed at this. So before I commit to this, let's actually go ahead and spend our XP token. I wasn't originally planning to commit to using this XP token for this top intelligence row here, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to go ahead and spend that. Now, again, I can choose how I want to divvy this up in any way I want, right? So I can choose to actually uh, bump one up in the intelligence track and one up in the power track, just so that you're aware. You can split it up across the tracks, um, however you feel. But just because I want to make sure I do really well in this check, uh, maybe, uh, so so hard. I kind of want to bring the 12 down, but I feel like it's so far away that it might make more sense to bring the 7 down to a 6, because we've been really lucky. You know, I feel like once we get into this range, we you know, the chances of things going positive are always good. Um, actually, maybe that's all I want to do for intelligence, and maybe the other one, I will bump down one of these other ones into the 6 range, so maybe I'll bump this down into this range right here, making just life a little bit more easy, maybe not having to spend as many effort dice. All right, I've already gone ahead in the app and selected to speak in defense of the priest, so we know we're gonna be using this in, uh, intelligence track at the top here, so I'm definitely going in with these two. Uh, I do really wanna succeed at this, and there's no other checks in this at all, so I think for sure I'm gonna probably throw, oh, do I do, I think just one. I think just one now. Yeah, I think it's overkill if I go any further than this. Let's just do that. That was a great roll. So I got six, seven, eight, which is well beyond what I think I need. Hopefully two successes have enough. Punching in two successes and confirm what happens. The fortune teller laughs. I had hoped he would gather enough courage to come here himself instead of sending messengers, but it is what it is. If you can convince him that he can, if you can convince him that he can ask his questions safely, I will welcome him. Okay, so hit okay. The priest arrives soon after, stopping you as you leave. Believe it or not, you were much help to me. Okay, so I ended up making this all work out. I kind of solved that side quest. Let's hit okay. I'm not sure what I can do for you in return, he confesses, but at least accept this token of my gratitude. Hey, look at this, two XP and two coins. So it pays to actually do these little side quests every now and then, so that's, that's pretty sweet. So hit OK, and you'll see that the Crossroads uh, miniature has now changed to a POI uh, token. So we'll go ahead and replace that. I'll hit OK. Now, what else do we want to interact with at the camp? I've also gone ahead, just so you're aware, I've placed two XP tokens next to my player board. I got two more coins. So I have a total of three coins, so I'm definitely happy to spend one in order to let the fortune teller divine my fate for just a single coin. Hopefully this isn't a waste of money. So let's go ahead and click that in the app. Do I wish to spend a coin? Yes, as soon as I do, I have to actually get rid of the coin that I have gone. It says, her eyes lock onto yours, gazing deep as if into your heart. Obedience, she whispers. This is what drives you, isn't it? You choose who to follow, and in the name of that loyalty, blood will be spilled. You may feel yourself free from this hunt soon, but there will come a time when the hunt is all that remains. She lays a single card onto the table. Her words fill you with fear of something you don't yet understand, but you accept her gift. Gain a tarot card, death. That is a card that likely ties back to the crazy guy way up in the field plowing. That's awesome. I hope this is the right card, though, because he was referring to something like this, uh, vaguely anyway, and this is the only thing that makes sense in my head. So I'm now that is another tie that I need to go explore. So let's go ahead and hit OK, and I'm going to gain that item. Gone ahead and added this item in. It's considered a charm. It has an always effect. It says after each of your intelligence tests, if all of your effort dice are exhausted, you may boost up one of your trackers on the power row. That's actually really cool. So if you're overexerting yourself when you're doing these intelligence tests, you actually get stronger in this other row. That's huge. 
All right, a few options remain inside the app. It says take a look at the uh, the market, which is there, which is certainly an option that allows us to spend some coins. I do have two coins. Um, so, I mean, we could buy something like a uh, lantern, for instance, or a torch. Uh, there's some medicine in there that's a plus. So maybe one of those things is a good thing. Uh, we can also ask the fortune teller about our destiny. I think I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and grab my destiny card. We're going to do that one first and we're going to choose to finish the spell one because we're very much heading in that direction it seems, which is the yellow side of the coin. So let's go ahead and click and we're going to scan the yellow side. There are rumors about some dark dealings in the mausoleum by the ruins. Okay, that's good to know. I've not seen a mausoleum and I have not seen the ruins yet. So the mausoleum and the ruins, you say. Okay, well, I'll keep that stuff top of mind. Um, in terms of the two options left in here, it says take a look at the uh, market or ask the fortune teller about an item. Well, I don't know. Like, is there any reason? I could ask the fortune teller about the dog to find out like why the dog was in the middle of nowhere crying by itself. So let's do that. It seems kind of weird, uh, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. So we'll just click on the app. We'll scan the dog, see if she knows anything about it. Is that the old hunter's hound? I don't even know who the old hunter is. Okay, old hunter's hound, old hunters. I don't know. I don't think that's been mentioned yet. So I don't I don't think I've run into that individual, but maybe if I bring back his dog, he'll be happy <laughs> if he's still living. Um, take a look at the market. That's certainly something I could do. I do have two coins. Do I bother buying anything? Actually, taking a look at what's available here, I gotta get that lantern. Like, look at this thing. Each time you explore, you just gain another experience token. Like, that's huge. I've been flipping tiles all the time. I mean, I may not flip that many going forward anymore, but experience point is still an experience point which still helps you uh, to do better on those checks and I think that makes a lot of sense. Medicine's pretty good too here. It allows me to uh, make this uh, power track a little bit cheaper for each other item you own. Not bad. So definitely paying my last two coins for the lantern, slotting it into my fourth item slot which is awesome. These coins are returned back to the pool of coins. And that's it. And if I go OK inside the app, there's nothing else I can choose to do at the camp. So I'm going to end my turn now and confirm it. That's going to end things. I get one effort die back. So I will be taking one die and placing it into my pool. And we're going to continue on. It states in the app, the beast was seen running toward the woods. It moved inhum inhumanly fast. And that's it. Now we move into day number six. We are starting to run out of time. Now this is where things get interesting because I'm so far south down in that bottom southeast corner and I need to get back up to where the crazy plow individual was because I think I have the card that I need to give this individual in order to get what I need in terms of a ritual item. But it's gonna cost me a lot to get over there and I also got a hint around the mausoleum and the ruins when I scanned my destiny card, which I haven't seen yet. So it's got to be around here somewhere. Now, taking a look really, really far west, you can see what looks to be like maybe the ruins right there. Like that's, that's got to be it, I, I assume, unless it's up in one of these other corners or around it somewhere. But it's really far away from me. And again, I can only move up to two spaces at a time, so I need to be wise as to how I do this. But I think the first step is just sealing the deal with this crazy individual at the plow first. And then if I get at least one ritual item, then maybe I can continue on this path towards the ruins or at least what I think looks like the ruins. So I'm gonna have my explorer leave the camp, heading up here one and then into this area for two. Heading into the app, I've got a couple options. I could go to the blacksmith, which certainly would be an option if I was heavily going after that as my destiny. Um, the inn seems interesting to me because maybe I could figure out who this old hunter is. Maybe I'll find the old hunter as I, you know, run around uh, trying to figure out what the heck's going on in here. So let's go ahead and interact with the inn and see what's there. So we'll click on that point of interest. Hit yes. The townsfolk inside are busy discussing current events in the days of the beast. There's much to talk about, but they fall silent as you join them and they quickly make their excuses. Rumors of your interest in the monster are spreading. Someone pushes a talisman into your hand. It protects you from evil, they say. 
almost apologetically. Interesting. So we actually gained a talisman out of nowhere. Here's the talisman. I was really hoping this would be a ritual item, but it is not. It states right here, plus three in terms of successes in a test where you got zero. So basically you roll your main dice, you do really poorly, you don't get any successes, use the talisman, it's gonna help you. Or uh, if you use your effort dice as well and everything still goes south, you can still use the talisman as long as you didn't get any successes. This will give you three, so that's pretty good. Heading back to the app to see what the inn is all about. It states the inn is warm and welcoming despite the air of anxiety caused by the monster's arrival. Hunting trophies cover the walls, mementos of the innkeeper's past. Townsfolk exchange rumors in hushed voices. The innkeeper seems distraught when you ask. He explains that his trading partner carrying a substantial amount of coin is days late. The path through the woods is growing dangerous, he explains, and I'm not sure about the inn's future if I don't get the money soon. Oh, shoot, and I kind of spent all my money. Ugh. Okay, so first off it states, I can as an option give the innkeeper his five gold, which obviously would be a really kind thing to do if I had the money, but I do not. I can buy myself a meal for a coin. I can't even afford my own meal, so that's not gonna happen as of right now. I can ask the innkeeper about my destiny, or I can ask the innkeeper about an item. So this is where I probably wanna ask the innkeeper about the dog, because I'm still trying to figure out who the heck the old hunter is, and this is a place full of hunting trophies, so kinda of makes sense. Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna go ahead and ask the innkeeper about the item. Let's try and see if this lines up. Give me something good. Is that the old hunter's hound? Okay, this is the second person who said that. Is it gonna give me any information? No! So everyone's just kind of like, hey, this is the old hunter's hound, no big deal. Uh, it's like, it doesn't even matter. Nobody cares about this dog, apparently. <laughs> Somebody knows who this old hunter is. He's just aimlessly wandering around. Uh, but now let's actually ask the innkeeper about our destiny. So I'll scan that, make sure I scan the gold side because that's what I'm heading towards here. Let's see what the innkeeper has to say about me. Folk claim something dark has defiled the sacred spring. What happened there? Okay, so now we have a sacred spring as well on top of the ruins and the mausoleum. I'm getting like I'm getting mixed mixed signals here as to where I should be going. Um, but yeah, as of right now, paying coins, I have nothing I can do. I'm gonna have to end my turn right now, so we'll end it and say yes. Now we get to go ahead and refresh one die. Now thankfully, because I didn't do a skill check, all of my dice are back. Plus I've got two XP tokens I haven't used yet. So that's really handy. I can really boost myself up. And we'll hit okay. Husband of a witch, son of a witch, nothing good could have come from this. Some say about the missing mare. Others claim the sorceress summoned the beast to kill him as she hid in the dark woods. Interesting, so rumors are going around. And now we begin day seven. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys know exactly what I plan to do, and that is to head up here in order to interact with the plowman. Heading back to the app, let's go ahead and click on the strange plowman and see how this interaction is gonna pan out. So remember our two options from last time, give him a card or it's a dark spirit, banish it. So let's go ahead and give him this tarot card, death, and see if this lines up for him. This is gonna be really interesting. If you want answers, you must wait or give the card that holds your fate, he frowns. I should have gone with this. Everything sounds better when it rhymes. Thank you kindly for your help, stranger. I would love to stay in chat, but I seem to have festivities to prepare. The plowman turns and runs with strange inhuman leaps, quickly disappearing from sight. You shiver. Discard the tarot card death, so this is where it gets discarded, and gain the corrupted paw, 36. Check it out, I got myself a ritual item, Corrupted Paw, states ritual keyword. It's always has an effect down here that'll benefit me whenever I have this. It says it's gonna give me one success in each test where you roll a total of less than or equal to five. So that's actually pretty good. So now looking at the game board, you'll notice that the token is no longer there for the Strange Plowman. That's because the app told me to get rid of it and then my turn ended right then and there, which means day seven is over. We're moving into day number eight and that is the last day. This is the final day and I only have one ritual item. I need one more plus. I would need to get back to the crossroads. 
And then on top of that, I would need to bury these things. And then from that point on, I don't even know if that would actually solve it or I would need to interact with this beast in some way or go south, I believe my destiny says, to try and find it. Like, there's a lot to do here still. So you can see with this challenger mode, you really need to min-max your behavior across all this landscape and story to figure out what's the best way to solve this. Uh, and it's gonna take you a number of times of playing it over to figure out all the pieces, because as you can see, I haven't been able to explore every single tile here and I haven't made all the connections yet, but I'm starting to piece together that story and that's the whole point. If you play the Explorer mode, which is not the mode I'm playing right now, then you don't have that time constraint and you can continue to explore and expand and move around the world because uh, you're more about enjoying the actual experience of the narrative and building out the story whereas Challenger is going to challenge you. And it's doing it to me right now. So let's hit okay and see what happens. So for day number eight, no major changes on the landscape and we can now just dive right into our turn, which for me is gonna be an interesting one. So for this last day, looking at the game board, it gets really interesting because I can only move up to two spaces. So it really comes down to, you know, you know, what if, I'm not going to win here, but what is going to give me the best information for the next retry is really what I'm kind of looking at right now. And I am very curious, and I don't think I'd want to check this later. It's more so around this doctor that just apparently happened to be walking through when all this stuff happened. Like, it just seems way too coincidental where it's stated like, oh yeah, this doctor just seemed to be here at the right time. It's like, huh, interesting. So if that's the case, and that's probably an, an individual who I maybe wouldn't go to my way to interact with normally, maybe it's the perfect time to do it. He is two spaces away. I'd love to be able to get to this ruins area and check it out, but it's not gonna happen in this in this uh, playthrough. I could go to this area here, but it literally looks like a desolate area. Let's head to the doctor and just see if the doctor has anything information-wise that might help me with the next time I play. So we'll just move into this area here and we're gonna go back to the app and interact. So let's go ahead and click on the town hall and hit yes. Screams of agony greet you in the dim town hall. Turned into a hospital overnight it is now a place of blood and death. A dozen inhabitants wounded by the beast are howling in pain, while those who were spared are doing what they can to help get back on their help them get back on their feet or ease their pain. The doctor, a new arrival from the city, the reason I came here because I feel like that's really strange, sits by the entrance regaining what strength he has. I can give the doctor the supplies he needs, which I mean, if unless he needs a talisman, a, uh, does he want a car? Corrupted paw, that could be good. A dog, a bow, a lantern. I don't really think that any of those things are necessarily going to help right now. I can steal from the patients. Wow, okay, that's an interesting option. Um, I mean, I am gonna lose, so I mean, if I wanna do something horrible, this would be my opportunity. Um, ask the doctor about your destiny could be a good idea, or assist the doctor in his work. So I'll probably do the bottom two first just to see how things go. So let's do the Destiny one, just to see if he has any information that's useful to me. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Let's scan, let's find out. The farmer is a superstitious man and knows of such things. Okay. And again, it's all in relation to what's on the back of your card, right? So you have to think of what they say in those pop-ups versus what's on the back of your card. So. It didn't help me too, too much. Didn't help me at all, really. Um, but the other option here is to assist the doctor in his work. Maybe, maybe he provides something and he is superstitious. So maybe, who knows, maybe he has, like maybe he is the connection. So let's do it. Let's try to assist the doctor in his work. Okay, so uh, actually before we go ahead and confirm that we're gonna go ahead into a test, you know what I'm gonna do? is I'm going to spend both of my points of experience. So prior to committing to the test, I'm gonna go ahead and throw everything I've got at this because there's no other check that I think I plan on doing unless I really wanted to steal from the patients, which I kind of am tempted to do just for fun. So maybe I'll keep like one effort die behind. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to spend both of these XP tokens right now in order to bump this from way back here up four slots. So it'll go all the way up to eight. So one, two, three, and four. I'm definitely gonna be rolling these two dice. I've looked through all of my abilities that are on the bottom here. And when I'm doing this intelligence check, um, not many of them are gonna help unless I outright fail and get no successes, then the talisman will help me out. Or I happen to get uh, a roll five or less total. 
So that's unlikely to happen here because I'm probably going to go like this and roll this much and I keep one and I might even try to steal from the patient patients just to see how things would work out in that case. So let's go and roll and see what we get. We got a pretty low result. That is a 6-7. So we just... We lowered that down and just missed it. So we only get two successes. So let's punch that into the app. Punching those two successes in and confirming it states, you help enough to make a difference. A little hope brought to the suffering folk. You leave tired but confident. You gain, oh, we gain some XP, a coin, and we get to refresh all of our effort dice. And now because I'm a cruel individual and I know my day is over, I'm going to steal from the patients to see what happens because now I'm going to be able to make this roll with all these effort dice. I just want to see what the end result ends up being for fun. But first, before I do that, let's spend the XP before I commit to the test because you can't do this during a test. I'm going to bump things up over here. So what do I want to do? If I'm rolling this many dice, I really just want to bring one of these down two positions to, you know, for the off chance that I might be able to hit it. So let's go ahead, click on, we're going to commit to that test now uh, for dexterity. This is where I have the bow. So the bow does, this is kind of funny, actually. I could use the bow. Oh, this is so bad. I'm stealing and using a bow at the same time. So in a dexterity test, also use all of your uh, markers from red. So I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to discard this card <clears throat> to make use of any successes across both these rows in the bottom. And I'm going to roll everything I have to see what happens here. So this should be really interesting. <laughs> Talk about talk about conflicting moral issues um this one i'm actually not sure where that was i'm gonna have to double check that in a second so we got uh one success so three six seven eight nine so nine's gonna put us here so it's gonna be one two three successes four five successes six successes that is a crazy amount Heading into the app, let's go ahead and punch in six successes because I am a terrible person by doing this to see what happens. I mean, this is probably one of the better results you can possibly get off this. Um, the fat Miller with a badly wounded leg doesn't notice when you take his entire purse. He probably won't survive anyway, so he doesn't need the coins anymore, does he? Still, your conscience weighs heavily. Gain a single coin. So I put all that effort into stealing a coin, and not only do I feel terrible about it, I didn't even get anything out of it anyway. So I was thinking maybe there might be an item there or something that could connect to the story, or maybe I'd find out the person I stole from was the old hunter or something. None of that stuff worked out for me. I just feel terrible now. <laughs> so it states here, give the doctor the supplies he needs. Um... I don't know. I have a lantern. Does a lantern help? Does a, cor does a corrupted paw help? I guess I could try it. Let's do it for fun and see what happens if I give him something that makes absolutely no sense. Um, let's try giving... Well, let's give him the lantern to start. And this is a give, so I'm not getting it back. Let's do that. So we'll click on that on the app. Let's see what happens if I give him this. He's probably going to say he doesn't want it. The doctor shakes his head. Not only am I stuck in the middle of nowhere, but even as I'm needed, I have nothing to work with. What have I done to deserve this? He sounds pretty, pretty beaten up. So he did not end up taking this. I don't believe, it didn't state that he took it. It looked like he was just kind of bewildered that I had even potentially tried to give him a lantern. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit end, end turn right now. And this is going to end things for me in challenge mode. The howl resounds once more, closer than ever. In a torrent of claws and fangs, the beast descends upon the village one last time. You lose. When both the bestial roars and the screams give way to silence, those brave enough to leave their homes came upon a scene of massacre. With scavengers feasting upon the fallen, strangest of all, the body of the lost mayor's wife, the one some called the sorceress, was found on the church altar. Men whispered of a curse, of a warning left by the beast. No one knew what sins she committed to deserve this fate, but the villagers knew better than to give her a Christian burial. Neither the mayor nor the beast 
were ever seen again. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this solo playthrough for Destinies from Lucky Duck Games, the very first introduction scenario. As you saw me struggle, not only morally with my choices, especially there at the end, but also trying to determine which way I wanted to go with my destiny. I was really aiming for the finish the spell destiny and ended up getting at least one of the ritual items, but definitely ran out of time in terms of trying to find that second one or even just beginning to try and piece together how to find that second one there was still quite a bit to uncover here even after one play so very impressed and looking forward to giving this another shot trying other things now knowing some of the information about the story might help me give me a leg up the next time but probably still doesn't guarantee I may be successful we will have to see how it goes so thank you guys so much for watching really hope this helps you get a good idea as to how this plays solo and and stay tuned to the channel as I will be covering the Explorer mode for Destinies from Lucky Duck Games as well in the near future. Let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts? What did you think about the playthrough? What did you think about my choices? Did you see another avenue in terms of the story opening up or branching that I missed? Did I go down a path that I shouldn't have? Did I make a choice that I shouldn't have? I'm sure I've did that actually um, but did I make the wrong decision in terms of what I was focusing on did you see a clue that I missed it's very possible I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below really hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching and as always keep on rolling solo